dawn in Ontario, California, the early morning fog hasn't deterred the workers and the watchers. They're all here to see what's been called the world's fastest sport. A sport combining speed, power, excitement, and the ever-present element of danger, drag racing. and welcome from the Ontario Motor Speedway in Ontario, California. This is the 14th Annual World Finals of Drag Racing. I'm Frank Lieber, along with former champion Carl Olson, and last chance to win a national title for some of these guys. Certainly is, Frank. This is the last event on the National Hot Rod Association schedule, and the prize money at this event is hopefully going to carry some of these guys through a long, cold winter. This is a racer's racetrack, the quickest and the fastest in the world, some say. It certainly is. It's generally regarded by the racers as the finest drag strip in the world, although a number of competitors have had some difficulty here in qualifying this weekend. Well, we're going to be looking at competition in three categories today. We'll look at the, uh, the funny car We'll look at the pro stocks and, of course, the big guys, the heavyweights, the top fuel dragsters. And right now, let's meet some of the top fuel drivers. I'm Gary Beck. My race car is from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I live in El Toro, California. I plan on winning the world finals today. Richard Tharp, Dallas, Texas. I'm here trying to win the world finals for the first time. My name is Rob Bruins. I'm from Bremerton, Washington. It's my first time I've ever qualified at the world finals, and we're looking forward to finishing very well. And a lady who didn't finish too well in the 1978 World Finals, Shirley Muldowney, who was eliminated in the first round. The most successful woman driver in the history of all motorsports. This is Kelly Brown, the Cinderella story of drag racing in 1978. After a five-year layoff, he won four national events, was eliminated by Rob Bruins in the opening round. Final action now. Richard Tharp of Dallas, Texas against Jerry Ruth of Seattle, Washington. And they're about to go through the burnout procedure. You might explain that, Carl. Yeah, they pull into two puddles of water back in the bleach box, about 20 feet behind the starting line, spin the tires very hard. You can see the car jump up as the tires expand in circumference. And the surface starts to smoke as they superheat it for better traction. Clean all that residue off. There's no reverse gear on these top field dragsters, so then they have to push them back to the starting line. That's what they're doing right now. 18-inch tires. They are huge. Yes, they're backing these tires right up over the marks left on the burnout, so you're having a hot rubber to hot rubber surface to run on. And we're ready now for the staging procedure. The drivers pull the front wheels up into a set of photo cell beams, hesitate, and then roll another six inches until they're staged and ready to run. Your reaction is everything as they take off, and Richard Tharp well in the lead and goes in with the victory. Richard Tharp, parachute out there to stabilize the car, fine time. Looked like he burned some pistons on that run, Frank. I'm sure he'll have some work to do. One of the legends in drag racing, Big Daddy Don Garlitz from Sefner, Florida, who set the top fuel mark of 5.63 back in 1975. Don's the undisputed king of the dragsters, the winningest driver in top fuel history. Quarterfinal action here. He's racing Larry Dixon out of Van Nuys, California, local boy who's been running around the country very well this year. Rolling Thunder, and they take off, and it is Big Daddy Don Garlitz with the lead. And the victory for the winningest driver in top fuel racing history, time of 6.22. Take a look at one of the rising young stars of drag racing, Rob Bruins of Bremerton, Washington. He's one of the favorites. Why does he drive a top fuel dragster? I love it. I, I've driven both dragsters and funny cars, and uh, funny cars are a lot of fun to drive, but the top fuel cars are fun to race. I mean, it's open wheel, and you're side by side, and there's nothing more exciting than going down the racetrack and look over and see another set of spoked wheels next to you at 240 miles an hour. It's just me. It's Bruins and Dave Uhara, whom some have called the world's oldest living kamikaze pilot. Stage and gone. Oh, Uhara breaks traction right there, and Rob Bruins is not going to be caught this round. Rob Bruins, the winner in this round of competition, fine time of 5.95. That's 240 miles per hour. Rick Ram 
Ramsey from Fountain Valley, California, will take on Gary Beck. Beck, the top qualifier. Ramsey is broken. Frank, they're pushing him off to the side, and it looks like Beck is going to get a single. Well, this is the easy way home. Will he try to run hard? He'll probably be shooting for that lane choice, and he leaves hard. Top time gives you the choice of the lane in the following round, and that is a fine time. Great run by Gary Beck as Ramsey's being pushed away. Here's Carl. 5.81, Gary. Low elapsed time of eliminations. You got a single. It didn't look like you needed it. Well, we uh, want to run lane choice, and we're still working on this engine. We'd like to keep running it down in there. These guys are tough. It's busy time in the pits, Carl. Richard Clark putting the candies and used car together for the semifinals. Everything's looking good. Down now to the round of four. Rob Bruins and Big Daddy Garlitz. The young lion and the old lion. For supremacy in the world finals of hot rod racing. Stage. They're ready. Don Garlitz in the semifinal round in the time of 6.08 seconds. A big victory for the Washington youngster and a very happy crew. The other semifinal round, Richard Tharp taking on Gary Beck. Tharp from Dallas, Texas. Beck, former Canadian, now lives in El Toro, California. There they go. Oh, and Richard Tharp is way out of shape. Almost got across the center line. What happened? Looked like he broke traction with one tire and it drove the car sideways. Let's take a look at it again. Has he a reputation for doing this, Carl? Yes. As a matter of fact, he always puts the car right on the ragged edge but never seems to go over. So Richard Tharp, driving the Candies and Hughes entry, is out of the competition in the semifinal round. Coming up next, funny car elimination. Back now to the world of funny cars and one of the classic matchups, the snake and the mongoose. Don Frigo and Tom McEwen, and they've been dueling forever, Carl. This is the oldest rivalry in drag racing. Every race these guys have is a classic. Quarterfinal action here in the funny cars. These are nitro-burning engines. Cost you about ten and a half dollars per gallon. I think inflation is bad in the regular cars. like it's Tom McEwen with an upset victory and from the reaction of the crowd it appears to be a very popular victory. Certainly is. This repeats the victory McEwen had over Perdome at the U.S. Nationals over Labor Day weekend and it's just almost unheard of. Frank, anytime you see smoke or haze off the tires it means the drivers lost traction. So the Mongoose is in the semifinals. Here's Carl with the winner. 623 in the right lane is very impressive, Tom. Yeah, I was happy with that. I was hoping I could run a, a low 20 because I thought the way the track was going, you can't go by the drag for these things. And I was hoping he'd make a mistake and keep it steady all day. And I didn't think the track would hold another O with him. That's what I was hoping for. Miracle still happened. A disappointed Don Prudhomme, the winningest drag racer of all time. Now, let's meet the other semifinalists. My name is Raymond Beadle. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, we have never won this race, but this year we're hoping to go all the way to the finals. My name is Denny Savage. I'm from Mission Viejo, California, and we're here trying to win our second NHRA national event this year. Hi, I'm Gordy Bonham. I'm the defending world finals champion. We're here to do it again. Of all the dragsters, the funny cars could be described as the most dangerous because of the engine location, which is in front of the driver. Here's an example involving a young man by the name of David Benjamin from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Frank, the danger in these cars is fire. In spite of a lot of sophisticated safety equipment, once these fiberglass bodies really get to burning, like this one is here, as you can see from the black smoke as he goes down the shutoff area, and a ball of fire is almost impossible to put out. 
The protective equipment may be the only thing that saved him here. I'm sure it is. He smacks the wall pretty hard here, adding to his problem. So how, might you ask, could a man survive a fire like this? The intensity of this funny car fire was tremendous. You can see the damage done to the driver's protective clothing. But the important factor is that, as you can tell by the T-shirt the driver was wearing, very little of the heat was actually transferred to him. Benjamin suffered serious burns, but is recovering. Semifinal action now. Raymond Beadle, the number four qualifier, against Denny Savage, the number six qualifier, in one semifinal round. Carl talked to Denny about battling Beadle. Yeah, if the car stays stuck and it goes straight down the track, it should run in the hole sometime. Denny, obviously driving a funny car is a dangerous occupation. Every driver runs the risk of injury or even death. Why do you do it? It's an obsession. Those machines just pouring out that horsepower, gulping, inhaling that nitromethane as they move into the staging area. Beetle driving the popular Blue Max. There they go, and it is Raymond Beetle all the way. Beetle with a big victory over Denny Savage in the time of 6.27 seconds. So a happy crew of Raymond Beetles joining him at the finish line. Let's take a look at that again. Frank, Raymond Beetle had lane choice. Surprisingly, at the last minute, he moved over to the right lane. Looks like it paid off as he hooks up for a solid win. Here's Carl with the winner. Raymond, you changed lanes at the last minute. Was that a sight job, or was that something you were looking for right along? No, we decided it's just the way we pulled up. We, thank you, thank you, we decided that the last we run good that last time in that right lane, so we was going to try the left, and we decided, well, we run so good, we might as well stick with what we had. More semifinal action now. Gordy Bonnet of Vancouver, Canada, the defending champion in this mini car event against Tom the Mongoose. McEwen. McEwen having perhaps his best season ever. Won the U.S. Nationals. Second in the Spring Nationals. They're in the staging area waiting for the green lights. They got it. Oh, tight race. Bonded out in front. McEwen coming on strong. It is McEwen. The Mongoose by a whisker. 6.22. Just six hundredths of a second separating. The two racers. Here you see it again. You see the jump that Bonin got, but McEwen coming on very strong at the finish. Here's Carl with the mongoose. Tom, when we talked to you earlier today, you said if you got past Perdome in the second round, you were going to win the race. You're in the final. How do you feel about it? I feel real good. Everything's going according to plan. I'm just racing a man for man on how I think I have to do without taking a chance on spinning the tires. Uh, he got out of me a little bit off the starting line, but I had plenty of power in the middle. I want to make sure it got off the starting line. So uh, I don't know what we turned. 622. So we got lane choice against Beetle. That's correct. So the stage is now set for the Funny Car Finals. Beetle against McEwen. We'll be back with that and the other final eliminations in just a moment. To the World Finals of Drag Racing in Ontario, the huge complex just outside of Los Angeles. The first final we're going to see is the Pro Stock Competition. Larry Lombardo against defending champion Bob Glidden. These machines are based on production type American cars, extensively reworked from front to rear. They burn service station gas. Carl? Frank, Larry Lombardo is known as a hole shot artist. He's got a reputation as being the first off the starting line every time. Glidden, one of the most dominant figures in the sport. He's won 19 events since 1973, and in the Ford Fairmont, he's racing. He's unbeaten since its debut back in July. Bob Glidden, Larry Lombardo, the Pro Stock Finals. They're in the staging area. to win it by a matter of inches. Our 
first champion is crowned. And here's Carl with Bob Glidden. Well, Bob, you did it the hard way coming from behind, but there's that number 20 rounds in a row and seven national event wins. You've tied an all-time NHRA record here today. How do you feel? Oh, that's great. We've had such a great year at this point. Uh, this is just a, a cap off of a great year. Funny car finals now. These cars are styled after Detroit's most popular offerings. Tom McEwen, the Mongoose, against Raymond Beadle. Earlier, we talked to the finalists in the pits. Frank, I mean, Tom McEwen's pit, where his crew is making preparations for the final round. Tom, you must feel real good. It looks like your prediction of winning might be coming true. Now we're getting ready to run Beetle, which I think will be the toughest race today. He's run a 615 and 627 that lane. He's excellent on the starting line. And uh, I'm trying to think now what I want to do, if I want to hop it up or leave it alone or whatever. And um, it's going to be real good. Frank, we're here with Raymond Beetle, the other finalist in the body car competition. And this little baby's been running just fine for you this weekend. Yeah, we've had a real good weekend. We came in the show, and every time we've made a change, well, the car has uh, responded to it. So we just hope we can uh, change some Pistons here this time and make the engine real fresh and give our best shot for the final. Really spinning fire, Carl. Yes, it's starting to get dark now. You can see those nitro flames looking out the pipes. Both cars moving into the staging area, waiting the green light. They got it. And something apparently happened to McEwen as Beetle breezes in with the victory. Raymond Beetle, the funny car eliminator champion, and there's his happy crew. Just amazing. Tom McEwen had the choice of lanes. He took the right lane, and he goes up in smoke off the starting line. Beatles off to a clean win. Anything unusual happened back there in the starting line? Well, I, I hate to say it, but that's probably our sorriest run of the weekend. We dropped the cylinder again, but I don't know what happened to Tom. He used to smoke the tires. Y'all probably know more than I do. You took off pretty good, though. Yeah, the car left good, but it went out and dropped the cylinder, and it just never did pick it up. So, Like I said, we ran good, and we won, so that's all that counts. This has got to be the climax to a great year which started kind of slow for you well not kind of slow it's probably the worst year we've ever had but uh it is really a good finish it's the first time we've ever stopped with a win so we hope we'll start off with a win next year congratulations to you thank you top fuel dragster finals now rob bruins and gary back this is the ultimate quarter mile acceleration vehicle Aluminum power plants that burn the exotic blends of nitromethane fuel can develop up to 2,000 horse. Six months ago, nobody outside the Pacific Northwest had even heard of Rob Bruins. All of a sudden, here you are in your third NHRA National Event Finals in a row. Are you ready for this race? Oh, I think we're ready, yeah. The, the car's been running real consistent. It slowed down a little at that time. We had a little equipment failure, but uh, I think we're ready, yeah. Notice your crew is changing tires. Uh, are the old ones worn out, or is this uh, to try and take advantage of changing track conditions? Well, no, they're exactly the same tire, but the tires that were on the car, they have the same amount of runs, but they've hazed the tires slightly the last two runs in a row. So rather than take a chance of doing it again, we'll just put on another set that we know worked the last time they were on the car. Okay, Frank? Carl's been over talking to Rob, and apparently all they're doing is changing the tire. Your problem's a little more complicated? Yes, Frank. Uh, we've been running the engine extremely hard, and uh, the track's awful good out there. And, and it, it's we've been hurting it. We're putting a little piston, a few pistons in it, a couple pistons each run. And uh, well, the, the air's cooling off. It's getting better each round, and we're just not quite keeping up on the tune-up. But uh, we don't want to change it too much because we don't want to slow down either. Now you got the uh, the lane selection here in this final eliminator. Which way are you going to go? Well, I hope the good one. And Beck has apparently got some problems, Carl. Frank, that's Buster Couch, the official starter over there. It looked like he may be getting to give uh, Gary Beck a cutoff signal. Now let's see what happens here. He... Yes, I think he did. He's wildly motioning to the crew to get back. And Bruins here will go at the single round. An easy victory in the world final for young Rob Bruins. Left at the starting gate with no place to go and trying to figure out exactly what happened, Gary Beck and his crew. Meanwhile, a very happy but very exhausted Rob Bruins winning his first World Finals title ever. Beck extremely disappointed. Here's Carl with our top fuel winner. Just tell us what your feelings are right now. Well, I was 
I was kind of down before the race or before the final because I really didn't feel I had that much of a chance to win this deal. I knew that the car's been running competitively and very good, but but Gary just had a barrage of outstanding ETs today, and, and uh, this I just can't believe this. This is even better than the fall nationals, and that was right at home. Remember the name Rob Bruins. He has reached the pinnacle here in the world finals and certainly has a great future ahead of him.